All right, today we're going to talk a little bit about oil and gas, but not like the oil and gas industry, silicon oil and expandable intraocular gas. You might be wondering, why is Neurop talking about this? Because when we are using silicon oil and intraocular gas, it can produce unexplained vision loss that ends up in Neurop. So as you know, silicon oil and the expandable gases C3F8 and SF6 are what we use for intraocular tamponade after retinal detachments. And that silicon oil is often used in giant retinal tears or proliferative vitroretinopathy or severe proliferative disease or recurrent detachment because we need that oil to tamponade the retina onto the back of the eye. Same thing with the expandable gases. Silicon oil needs to be removed, but the intraocular gases, uh, they just resorb over time. And when we have silicon oil in the eye, it can produce complications because the silicon oil can migrate. And that's because the oil itself can emulsify, which is break up into little particles instead of being a big blob. Those can coalesce and then flocculate together. And then you'll get creaming, which is the, the oil will be at the top. Because we have this emulsified form, it can migrate and it can migrate to the front of the eye. So it can be in the anterior chamber. It can migrate and glom onto the intraocular lens. It can cause keratopathy and it can migrate into the optic nerve, into the sheath, to the chiasm and intraventricular. So when we have vision loss after SO in Neurop, one of the things is that we would like to do an MRI scan to see if we can see the silicon oil migration pattern. Normally, when you have lack of recovery after a detachment, they don't need Neurop. It's like a recurrent retinal detachment or a vitreous hemorrhage or keratopathy or glaucoma or hypotony or the 10 million things that can happen to you after you have eye surgery that we can see. So when I'm talking about oil and gas and Neurop, I'm talking about stuff we can't see. SO, if there's no migration on the MRI, can affect the electrical signal of the eye. And so electrophysiology to measure the function of the retina, ERG and multifocal ERG, and the optic nerve, visual evoke potentials, and pattern visual evoke potentials can be used to see if we have toxicity related to the SO. But it doesn't have to be from the silicon oil. It can just be phototoxicity from the light pipe. And it's thought that silicon oil causes retinal toxicity because of disruption of the potassium sink effect. So if you have silicon oil in your eye that's holding this, the normal vitreous is like absorbing the potassium from the Mueller cell and the reactive byproducts from the support cells of the retina. And the silicon oil might be preventing that and that potassium flux can increase excitotoxicity in the retina and could cause the retinal toxicity that produces an abnormal multifocal ERG in unexplained vision loss after silicon oil placement or silicon oil removal. The gases are a little bit different story. The way the vision loss occurs with the gases is from another gas being introduced into the system. So when we have a gas bubble of C3F8 per fluorocarbon or SF6, that gas bubble expands over time because of diffusion. And one of the substances that we don't want to diffuse in there is nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide has an increased diffusion coefficient. It's 20 times more soluble and will go right into that gas bubble. And so any patient who has had intraocular gas with one of these expandable agents probably should not have nitrous oxide within a month or more of having their surgery because once that nitrous oxide gets into that bubble, the bubble will expand. And as that bubble expands, the pressure in the eye will increase because the volume inside is increasing and that's a closed system. So when you increase the volume in a closed space, the pressure will go up. And if the intraocular pressure exceeds a critical mean arterial pressure defined as two thirds diastolic plus one third of systolic, 
if the IOP exceeds the critical mean arterial pressure, that will cause a central retinal artery occlusion in the eye. So you need to know a little bit about oil and gas. Silicon oil, which causes toxicity to the retina, can migrate and we need to image it and we need electrophysiology to look for evidence of the toxicity from the agent itself. And intraocular gas, C3, F8, and SF6, which expands a normal property of the gas. But if you get an anesthesia procedure, and it doesn't matter what you're getting the anesthesia for, a knee replacement or hip surgery or whatever, the nitrous oxide that anesthesia is using will diffuse right into the gas bubble and could cause an elevation in intraocular pressure, leading to exceeding the MAP critical threshold and producing a central retinal artery occlusion. So neurops need to know a little bit about oil and gas.